Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna do something really exciting. Today I have a small project that I wanna to put together that actually solves a real life problem. And this is the kind of thing that I think really excites people to get coding and it's the kind of thing that motivates me to want to code and wanna learn more all the time and just get better at it. Because when I run into these issues, I can actually solve them just by writing a little bit of code maybe downloading a couple assets. So let's talk real quickly about what the issue was that I'm gonna solve here, and then we're gonna go over the process of solving it together. I'll let you follow along and watch me do it, go through the entire thing. So what's the problem? Well, a couple days ago, my wife started teaching toddlers the alphabet, trying to go through and get them to understand A, B, C, D, and all of them, and essentially just pick them out from a worksheet or pick them out visually. The first step, right? They're gonna go through, learn them, and then start doing alphabets and words and all the other crazy stuff later. But first, they gotta be able to find and recognize the letters. So one of the things that she asked me to do was to find some worksheets like these. These little worksheets where it's got a letter up top that shows the uppercase and lowercase version, and then just a bunch of random letters, and they go try to find that letter. After a bunch of searching, I was able to find a couple different worksheets that I could print out, but then it got me thinking, hey, wouldn't it be cool if this was like a game too, where you could just tap on the matching letters and it could be somewhat interactive, maybe pop something up, maybe even have mom say good job on there automatically. I just thought it'd be like a fun, cool little project. And then I could add in a print button and have it just print out copies that he could manually color in or both of the kids could just color in themselves. So that's what I want to build, something where we can pick a random letter or maybe allow the parent or person or whichever one of us wants to do it, to pick a letter, then have a bunch of letters fill in, and then let the kid just pick the ones that match and reward them when they're done. So we'll go through the process. I think it's gonna be relatively quick. I don't think that this is something that's gonna take more than an hour or so to build from start to finish. So I guess we'll just see what that's like. I'll talk a lot about the code, how it works, and how things come together, and you might watch me fail a little bit, but hopefully we'll go pretty quickly to a successful little project that we can deploy and you can follow along and build your own version of it or build your own little take on it, make some other matching, finding, clicking type text game or interactive game, or you can just copy this directly and put in your own voice and stuff and share it with kids or whatever you wanna do. All right, let's get started. Here we've created an empty project and I've imported one asset pack. I grabbed this GUI kit casual game pack that just has a bunch of UI elements and we may end up using them later. It was a huge pack, so I just wanted to grab it in advance in case I decided to use some of the fonts or other things from that pack. So we're gonna begin with a new canvas. In our empty scene, we'll go game object and choose UI and canvas. I'm thinking we wanna have a grid of all of the letters, maybe filling out this area down here, and then the letter up here in lowercase and capital form so that the kid can see it, and then click on the letters down below in that grid. So we'll start by creating with our canvas there, we'll go UI and text, text mesh pro. Now text mesh pro is already imported because I grabbed that asset pack and imported the package. If you don't already have it in there, go to package manager, and then you can go to unity registry and search for text. And you should see text mesh pro, just make sure that it's in there. It may get imported by default eventually. I would expect that that's probably gonna happen because it's such a great text option. So if you don't have it, just go ahead and add that right now. I'm gonna go back over to the scene view, go to canvas, right click UI and choose text, text mesh pro. Now I've got a new text field right here or a new text label, I guess is what you would call it. Now this thing is probably gonna look a little bit different from yours. If I expand this out, it's got this cookie run black font that came from this GUI kit casual game setup. So this thing actually had a bunch of fonts in it, which again was one of the reasons that I thought it was kind of cool. The default font is going to look something more like this Liberation Sans. So your text might look like this. You can always go in and create a new font in Text Mesh Pro. You just go to Window and then Text Mesh Pro and use the Font Asset Creator. With that, you can grab in an actual regular font file, generate an atlas, and then use that. Make sure that you crank up the atlas resolution a little bit higher than 512, maybe 1024. Make sure that it looks good enough at a big size. All right, I'm gonna switch back to that other font though because I thought that cookie black outline was pretty cool. I wanna make these big though, so I'm gonna go with this 210. Oh, that's too big. Let's go with uh, maybe like this. I'm not even sure. I don't know which one I wanna use. Maybe I'll go without an outline first. I'll do the no outline. Yeah, no outline. 
And I'm gonna take this text object and I'm just gonna put this up at the top. So I'll scroll up here in the inspector, choose the rect transform tool and it's alt and shift to go right up here to the top when I click on that and just anchor it up to the top. And I'm thinking that this will show my current letter. So let's start with the letter A. I'll just put in a big capital A and then we'll center it horizontally and vert. Oh, there we go. Center it there and vertically. All right, yeah, horizontal and vertical center. Got them right. All right, let's crank up the size a little bit. So we'll just adjust that font size and it doesn't, let's see, doesn't look big enough yet. I'm gonna go to the game view so I can see what it looks like here and switch, let's see. So now it's a little bit too big and it's going off the top of the screen. So I'm gonna go back to the scene view and resize this a bit. And I'm thinking I probably want it to be about this big. So let's hit auto size, let it adjust a bit and then crank up that max to 220. Gonna figure out what I really wanna do here is get it to about the size that I want it to be, figure out what that font size is, and then I'll just lock it. So I'm thinking probably about 120 or 130. So I'll check out, uncheck auto size, just put in like a 120, and then move it, I think right over here. So this would be like find letter A. I'm gonna duplicate that and make a lowercase one. So control D, hit W to go to the move tool, drag it over here, and maybe the uppercase one will be second. So I'll take the first one and make this a lowercase a. I've got an A and then an uppercase A. I think I might wanna offset this just a little bit too. Click on it and hit that move tool and just drag it a little bit. Let's see, A, A, mm, I'm not really sure. I think I wanna swap the order of these actually. Find the letter A, yeah, more like that. Okay, so looking a little bit closer to what I want. Um, now I'm gonna put that grid in. In fact, I think I'm gonna actually delete that second letter. Not, not that one, the other one. I think I'll just start with the capital one first. Now let's go add a grid. So what we're gonna do under this canvas is right click and choose UI and we're gonna add a panel. I'm gonna make this panel an area where we'll put the grid of all of the letters. So go to the scene view, hit T to go to the rect tool and just drag the top of it down to ah, right about here. Now if I go to my game view, I can see this split and this is where I'm gonna put my letters. I don't have to have this part visible by the way, I can just uncheck the image, but I'm gonna leave it on just for a minute so I can see where that area is while I'm working with it and then I'll just flip it off. All right, so on here, I wanna add a grid layout group. So type in GRI and find grid layout group. Don't add a grid, add a grid layout group. The grid is something different. The grid layout group is gonna automatically lay out my sub items or my children in a grid that uses the cell size and spacing options here. So I just need to create some children under here. I'll right click on the panel hit UI and create another text text mesh pro object. I'm gonna give it the letter A and let's make it a capital A. And I think I'm good, right? I've got my letter here. Let's try duplicating it with control D and watch what happens. They all get filled out into this grid. Now I'm gonna do, I think just 26 letters. I'm not gonna use the entire alphabet and just do one of every letter, but it seems like a decent number to start with. So I'll just keep hitting it until I get to, what is it, clone number 25? Or until I finish a row. Let's see what that looks like. Hmm, well, that's probably about good. Now I wanna crank the size up on these a lot because they're way, way, way too small. These need to be something that the kid's gonna to touch. So let's crank them up to, I don't know, or grab the font size and just drag it until they look a reasonable size. I think that's looking a little bit better. I think I wanna do four rows though and make this a little bit more narrow. So I'm gonna to go to the panel, go to the scene view, and then just drag this panel in a bit drag this in a little bit so that I'm not going all the way out to the edge. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of spacing here. So right now I have zero spacing between these spots. Let's just add a little bit and drag it out. Maybe give them about that much space so that there's a bit more area between them and I'll even crank up the cell size a little bit. I think I'll go to like a 120 and then maybe around a, let's see. Oh, something around that size looks good. So I'm thinking about this many letters, however many that is with that 23-ish. So I'll shrink these down just a little bit. I'll go select all of my letters and shrink down their font size just a bit so that those A's are probably gonna fit in there. And then we also need to fix the alignment. So I'll hit the center and center. And I wanna get rid of, I think these last two. So I'll just select them both and hit delete. And then let's see, what else do we need to do to adjust this up? I think uh, maybe bring up the cell size here right now. 
got a little bit too much space in between them. So I think if we turn this to maybe like an 80, oh, let's go to an 85. It's looking quite a bit better. So now I've got my letters there. In fact, I think I want to spread these out a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more to the right and make these like 140. Oh, it's too big. 130 maybe. Let's just crank it until it goes good. Okay, well, it's like 128 will work. There we go. So pick whatever numbers work. This seems good though. I've got my letters lined up. If I go to my game view, I'll be able to see and just imagine that these all say a different letter on them and the kid's trying to find A. And I think I do want to put in the lowercase a again. I just want to put it there, maybe side by side with a little bit of extra space. So I'm going to select this one, duplicate it, hit W, move it over, and make this lowercase. And maybe it just needs to be smaller. I feel like it's just a little bit too big. So I'm going to shrink the font size down on the, the uppercase a. Make it like a 90. There we go. That looks a little bit better, I think. And then I want to cent or align this to the bottom instead of to the center. And I think I should do that with the other one as well. So I'll take this other text. Let's drag these. These are my two labels up at the top. Let's bottom align that one as well. So that way I can get them both kind of lined up in the same spot. Now I've got them both selected. I'm just going to drag them up a tiny bit. And I think we'll call that good. So now it's time to make our letters randomize. So the first thing I want to do is just have these all be random then I'll deal with clicking on them and seeing if they match and then deal with like, hey, did you get them all? And then we'll figure out how to do like, let's pick the next letter. So let's start by creating a little bit of code here that's going to go onto these letters. So I'm going to create a new folder off the root assets folder for scripts. Go right click, create folder, and we'll call it scripts. We did not want to create my folder. Let's try that again. Right click, create, and I'll choose folder. There we go. And choose scripts for the name. Let's spell that right. All right, in the scripts folder, we'll create a new C sharp script, which is just off the screen, but it was C sharp script that I picked. And that's going to be a, I'm going to call it clickable letter with a capital C and a capital L because it's a class name and that's what we do for classes. We use Pascal case. So I'll hit enter, create the file, and hit enter to open the code up. It should pop it up in Visual Studio. There we go. I've got my clickable letter script. So what do I want to do with this? I want to pick a random letter and I want to set the text to that letter. That's the first thing that I want to do. And I'm going to do that in on enable so that every time this text gets turned on, we get a new random letter. So I'll do that by adding an on enable. In fact, I'm going to delete start and update here because I don't think I'm going to need them. They're just going to clutter up my file. So let's delete those, clear it out and zoom in a little bit. So on enable, what do we want to do? We want to pick a random letter from the alphabet. Now, the easiest way to do this is to just Google it. How to pick a random letter in C sharp. So I want to show you the process of that. So say how to pick a random letter in C sharp. I'll Google it real quick. We'll drag it over and then we can just go, hey, let's look at all of these different options. Go click on one and say, oh, look at this. We can just use a character and we could just use char A, which is what this is. This is the first character or letter A. Char or character is essentially like a value from zero to 256 or a byte that represents something that's on your keyboard. You can look up mappings of these, but they all essentially map to a number. In fact, if I look at a uh, char value of a, you can see that the actual value here in decimal is 65 for an uppercase a. If I hit the ASCII table button here and go look at the actual chart, you can see that lowercase a is, what is this, 97. So a value of 97 is a lowercase a and an uppercase a is 65. I don't necessarily need to know that because I already found the code right here that just gets me a random character, a random char. So I can just take this little bit right here that says, hey, int a equals random.next and then get a char. But this is a little bit different because here it's not using unity as random. It's creating this new random thing. So I might do this, copy it and get confused because go, hey, this doesn't exist. Should I be using this? Why am I getting this random namespace conflict? Let's watch. Let's, let me copy this a little bit, show you what that looks like real quick, and then I'll show you how to fix it. Really simple. So we'll paste it in here, and everything looks good, except now we've got an error saying, hey, this doesn't work. The reason is because random in Unity Engine is actually a class, and random in system is a class as well. So if I want this to work, I have to do system.random and add system here or remove the using Unity engine, but that would break my mono behavior reference and ruin the whole thing. Another easier way to do this though, because Unity has random number stuff built in because it's such a common game thing, 
we can delete both of those lines and just say random dot range and get the same exact result. Now we don't need to have the using system. We don't have the error. We don't have the problem. And we are getting a character back. This is our random letter. I'm going to rename this from CH to random letter. And that's control R R to rename, or I could have just typed it in because there are no other references to it yet. Then the next thing we want to do is set our text to match this letter. So I'm going to say get component and we'll get the text mesh pro text component that's on there. There's a TMP underscore text. Now I'm in an editor that's going to auto complete this and add the using statement. So I hit enter and it added my using TM pro semicolon at the top. If you don't have that, you might have to go add that or you might not get your auto complete. Depends on your editor and if whether or not everything's working. All right. So I've got my get component call and something in my eye. If I can get that out real quick. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Success. All right. Let's add parentheses then open close parentheses and set the text with text equals random letter dot two string. Oops. I typed that wrong. Random letter. Let that auto complete control space, by the way, fixes that. So I've got the letter here. It's an error or the R is capitalized. So it's a problem. If I hit control space, it'll find the working one and fix the problem, at least in visual studio. So say random letter dot two string open close parentheses, semicolon, get that thing out of my eye one more time. And let's go hit play in unity and see if it works. So we'll save this off, go back into unity. And we need to add this clickable letter script to all of our letters. So I'm going to go select all the text objects, minimize their text field here and the shader. So I can see some stuff on the component, grab clickable letter and add it. Hit play and let's watch the magic in action. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, cool. I've got random letters that are all lowercase right now. Let's make them randomly be sometimes uppercase. I'll open up the script one more time. And I'm just going to say if random dot range zero to 100 is greater than 50. So a 50% chance and I don't have to think about it and it's easy to read. Then we will set the text to this lowercase one. So actually let's uh, shift delete, go back tab and we'll say else. I'm just going to copy line 14, paste it down below and say dot to upper at the end. Now I could optimize this a little bit, rewrite it some other way. It's so simple. It doesn't matter. There's no benefit in cleaning this up. I'm going to get rid of these two using statements though. That's our entire script. Let's save it off and go back into unity. Try one more time. I should get half uppercase, half lowercase letters. Now this obviously isn't perfect because I may end up with zero A's. Let's see. Did I get any A's? I got no A's at all, but we're getting random letters at least. So next I'm going to have to figure out how to get the right number of letters and you know, or the minimum number of letters, like I need to figure out how many of them I have and then maybe regenerate or something. But I think before I do that, I want to deal with clicking on them so that I can click on them and note that I've clicked on them. So I'm, I'm going to do that next. I'm going to go back into my clickable letter script and I'm going to add in an interface that allows me to deal with clicking on things. To do that at the end of mono behavior, I can add a comma and I'll add in the built-in interface. I click handler or I pointer click handler. I always spell that or say the word of that one wrong. So I pointer click handler though, and then I'll hit alt enter and implement the interface. It's going to automatically generate the on pointer click method that will allow me to deal with clicking on my letter. So here I just, I think first just want to say, Hey, debug.log that we clicked on the letter, make sure that we're clicking on it and that we know what letter we're clicking on. So I'll say debug.log. And we'll do open parentheses and our quotes and I'll say clicked on letter. And here we need to know what our letter is. So I think what we'll do is cache our letter right here where we're getting a random letter. We could just save that off and make that our letter. So let's do that now. I'm going to promote this up to a field by hitting alt enter. And I want to turn it into a field. Let's see. There's no option in here to just promote to a field for some reason. So if I rename it with control R R, Add an underscore, hit enter, and then hit alt enter. Ah, it still doesn't want to give me the option. I'll just delete the char, copy this, and then we'll type it up here. So say char random letter. There we go. Now it's a field that we're using and saving off. So we'll say clicked on the letter. And if I want to put this in, I can use the string interpolation. So I'll do the open parentheses or the open squiggly braces, paste in my random letter, close squiggly braces. Got to put the dollar sign before the quotes and the semicolon at the end. 
Now it should tell me whenever I click on whatever letter it is, just log it out that it's that letter. Let's try it out. Go back into Unity and make sure I got my console visible. Hit play. Let's try clicking on some letters. Up, oh, clicked on U, L, U. Oh, it's just adding up the numbers there. W, A, cool. So now I can click on the correct letters. So let's see what I wanna do next. I think if we click on the wrong letter, do I wanna do anything at all? Maybe I'll play a little sound or something like a boop or um, I don't know. I don't wanna to be too negative with it, but when they click on the right letter, I definitely want to light it up. So let's um, do a check first to see if they've clicked on the right letter and then maybe turn it green. But first, I guess I need to figure out like what the letter letter is. So I think I'm gonna add in some level controller type thing or game controller, something that's managing what letter it is that we want to have. So let's go back into our code. I'm gonna go back to our actual script, the clickable letter script. And I'm thinking, let's see, maybe at the beginning, we'll have a letter or a system that allows us to pick a letter and then just assign that as our game's core letter. So let's say, um, let's give it a class, we'll call public class, we'll call it letter picker or letter, uh, picker's not really a great name. I'm gonna call it game controller. I don't know what this is gonna do exactly and I'm gonna rename it later. We'll give, make it a mono behavior and add in the braces and then I'm gonna move it to its own file. So hit move type to gamecontroller.cs. Then I can hit control comma and go to gamecontroller.cs. There we go, now I'm into the file. I could also do this all in Unity, go in and create the file, but sometimes it's just easier to do it in Visual Studio. There, there's our game controller file, cool. So what is this gonna do? On enable, we'll pick a letter. So on enable, we'll say letter equals, and I'm just going to assign it to A right now. So the random selection won't be random at all. We'll just start with it being letter A. In fact, let's add, let's make this a serialized field. And let's assign it to A. And then in on enable, I won't do any of that. I will just say, hey, we're gonna set our letter to this and then I'll be able to adjust it in the editor and then work from there. So let's try that. All right, so what do we wanna do on enable? Well. I guess we want to tell all of those clickable letters to set their letter to something. So right now our clickable letters are you know, randomly picking their letter. I feel like what we need to do here is fill in an array of letters. Like we've got however many clickable letters we have and then have so many number of correct answers. So let's do that. Let's figure out a way to do that. Let's first get, um, I guess, a reference to all of our clickable letters. So I'm going to say on enable will generate board. Now that just means I'm going to create a method for generating the board because I don't know if I'm going to do it on enable or somewhere else. And I just want to give this something that's a reasonable name. So I've got my generate board. I'll get rid of that throw exception because I don't want to throw exceptions. Instead, I want to get all of the clickable letters. So I'll say var letters equals find objects of type. Got to add an S there, that's plural. And we'll get clickable letter. It's going to give us back all of our clickable letters. And then I want to, well, get a count of them. So int count equals letters dot count or length. It's going to tell me how many we've got. And then let's see, I want to create, I guess, a list of letters that's that long. So, well, I guess how many correct answers do I want to necessarily have? Let's make that a serialized field. I'll add a serialized field of int um, correct answers. And I'm gonna set it to five. I'm gonna get rid of this private keyword just cause I don't need it and to make things line up. So that they'll be able to find always five letter A's and then some other number of other things, right? So let's do a loop here. We'll say for i equals zero to correct answers. And then we'll say um, letters list dot add letter. So letters list doesn't exist. I'll generate that. We're gonna create a local and it's not gonna know what it is. It's just created an object. This should be a list of char. We're gonna create a list of characters and we'll initialize it to a new list of characters. And let's use the 
correct lower one there. It doesn't actually matter, but I prefer the lower one. There's you can look up with the difference later if you want. Okay, let's cut cut that and paste it. There's no technical difference. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, we've got our letter list here. It's going to be a list of characters, and then we're going to add in five of the correct letter. So we'll go through and loop it through it five times and add that many letters. In fact, I'm going to get rid of these braces and just shorten that a little bit. Now I want to go until the end of my count and add in just other random letters. So say four, and we'll go from I equals zero to count, but I'm going to change zero. I don't want to start at zero. In fact, I want to start at correct answers. So we'll start at zero, go up to correct answers, then we'll start at correct answers number and go to count. So imagine we're going to start at zero, go one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to start at five and go up to whatever the count is. So we'll go five, two, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we imagine what we really want here is a list of letters that matches our list of clickable letters or the length of our clickable letters. All right, so let's do it. Let's add in some other random letters. We already have the random letter generation right here in the clickable letter script. We have int a equals random whatever, and then we get a random letter. So let's just copy that. Go into our game controller again and paste here. And this is gonna get us a random letter, but it's not the right random letter. And we've got a couple things going on here. First is that random is ambiguous between Unity Engine random and system.random. It's the exact thing I talked about earlier because we have using system in here, which is used by one of these other things. We're getting this little error. So I need to add Unity Engine right here to say that we're using the Unity Engines version. And then the other issue we have is that random letter isn't a field, so it doesn't exist. So I'll say var random letter equals that. And then the last thing I want to do, though, is make sure that the random letter here is not our actual correct answer letter. Because if it is, I don't want to add that into our letters list. So I'm going to say if random letter is equal to our letter then we need to pick a new letter. So we'll um, have to choose a different one. So choose new letter. Now, this doesn't make sense. This code doesn't run and it's kind of confusing. So what I'm really thinking here is that we want to go through and pick a random letter, get a random letter back that doesn't match our current letter. So I'm going to make a new method. I'm actually going to add a line up here and I'll say var uh, chosen letter equals choose random letter random uh invalid there we go because i want an invalid one here we'll generate a method for it and this is going to return back a char then i'll take this little bit of code here and cut it and paste it right into here so we'll get a letter and then if they match we'll just return the same thing so say return choose invalid letter and then at the end we'll just return our random letter Okay, so this will work. This is actually going to get me a letter, but it also has one bad little issue, which is that it, because of the way it does the recursion here, theoretically, it's possible for it to fail. If it got A, I mean, realistically, it's not going to happen. If it got A 100 and something times, it could blow up um, and get a stack overflow exception. It's never going to happen, so I'm not too worried about it, but I'll show you how to rewrite it real quick to change it. One thing that we could do is this. We say while random letter is equal to letter, then we just say random letter equals that. So here we go. Oh, we got to paste in our um, our bit of code there. So we'll pick a random letter, and then while that letter is the invalid one, we'll just pick a random letter again and keep trying again until it's not the invalid one. The real benefit here is just that we avoid a possible stack overflow and a bunch of recursion that we don't necessarily need. A little tiny cleanup, a inconsequential, totally useless bug fix, but still a little bit cleaner. So why not do it? All right. So we've got our chosen letter here. And what we want to do now is just add that to our letters list. So say letters list dot add, and we'll add our chosen letter. And then the final thing we need to do is just assign our letters or our letters from our letters list to our letter or our clickable letters. So let's rename this. I'm going to rename this clickables. So this is our clickables, which are all of our text objects in there. 
and then our letters list, which is just the characters list. In fact, let's uh, rename this to Char's list. There. Now it's a little bit more obvious, I think, what, what we've got here. So what we want to do now is assign um, a character to each one of these letters or each one of these clickables. So say four, and we'll loop again through clickables.length or clickables.count or our count right here really is what it is. In fact, let's just use count since I'm already assigning that. Uh, you know what? Let's get rid of count. Let's get use clickables.length. And am I using count somewhere else? Yep. Let's just replace that with clickables.length. That way I don't have this extra variable here. All right. So we're going to loop through all of our clickables and we're going to say, hey, clickable, pick the character that matches your index. And then eventually right after this, we'll maybe shuffle up those characters. So say clickables, oops, clickables at I. So we use the indexer dot set letter and we'll just pass in or let's just set char no set letter and we'll pass in char's list of i now i'm going to create the set letter method and just alt enter to generate it and then f12 to go to it and then here we'll just take this little bit of code right here copy it paste it in and replace this with uh let's say letter get rid of that v there and then replace random letter here with letter now, I think I can probably get rid of the on enable. I'm just going to comment it out right now with control K, control C and minimize it. And then, um, oh, we want to assign our letter here. So I'll say random letter equals letter. In fact, I guess I could have not refactored, not rechange, not change those. But let's yeah, let's put those back to our actual field variable. All right. I think that's looking good. Let's go try it out in Unity and see what happens. Well, first, actually, I need to set up my game controller and add that to a game object. So I'll do that. I'm going to create a new empty game object, call it game controller. We'll add the game controller component that we created. It's got our level and or our, our letter and our correct answers count. And then we'll go to scenes and save this as um, a level one. I don't know what to name it yet. Hit play. And let's see it in action. All right, look at that. We've got our A's lined up. We've got our Y, a T, a couple of random letters and our five correct ones. So now the next step I think is to just randomize these positions. So we just need to randomize the sort order of this thing. And we can do that with a simple link statement. I'm gonna go back into our game controller. And before we assign the letters, let's just rearrange our chars list. So we'll say chars list dot order by and then we do a lambda statement so we'll say t and then we're not actually going to use anything in the character list instead we'll use unity engine dot random dot range and we'll give it a value of like zero to ten thousand so it'll pick a random number between zero and ten thousand for every character in here and then just order them by that now if i hit semicolon at the end you'll see that this won't actually fix it because order by in most link statements, they're going to return back a value. It's going to return back a new list of characters. So I need to say chars list equals chars list dot order by. And then we have to do dot to list because it's expecting it to be a list because that's what we defined it as. So we're taking our list, we're ordering it by complete randomness, and then it gives us back a queryable, which then we then just use to list to convert to a actual list. Yeah, or an, it actually gives us back an I ordered enumerable, not a queryable. All right, so we'll save that off, and now we should see a random order. Yeah, we've got one A, two A's, three A's, four A's, and five A's. And I can click on the correct letters. All right, things are, I think, looking good, right? Now it's just a matter of determining that we've clicked on all of the right letters, maybe highlighting the correct letter and um, letting the kid know and then adding some fancy polish. So let's do some checks here when we click on the letter. Let's say, hey, when we clicked on the letter, if it's the correct letter, um, let's turn green. So to do that, we just need to check here and see if our letter matches the game controller's letter. So say if our random letter equals game controller's level, or letter. Now our game controller letter isn't accessible anywhere. And I don't feel like we need to do very much extra code for this. So I'm going to cheat and just make this static. So we'll get rid of the serialized field. 
It's no longer serialized, so we can't modify it anymore, but it's static. There's only one instance of it. I don't have to worry about it, and I'm going to make this public as well. So I'll make it a public static character named letter, and I'm also going to rename it because it's public. I don't want to have that underscore anymore. They're tricking me to make me think that it's private because I use underscores to tell me things are private. So I'll rename it with control R R, get rid of the underscore and the lowercase L and make that capital. So I've got a public static character named letter. And in my clickable letter, I'll just say if it equals game controller dot letter. There we go. So if our letter is the correct one, then we'll set our text to green. So to do that, we can just copy this get component method, paste it in and say dot color equals color dot green. All right, let's try that out. Now the kid should be able to come in here and click on all of the A's and turn them green. A turns green, B does not. A turns green. Let's see, one, two, three, four, and five. Looking good. Okay, I think um, now we just need to do some sort of a success. Like, hey, you got them all. So seems like the next step. So we'll just do that in here, I guess. Well, let's say, let's see, what should we do? We've got our clickable letters and they should probably tell the game controller, hey, we um, we got one, right? Like add a point or we, we got, we clicked the correct letter once. Um, actually, it should probably say which one we clicked because if we click on the same one, oh, you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll disable ourselves after. So we'll say, hey, we clicked on it. We'll increment the counter and then we'll just disable ourselves. No reason to overcomplicate this stuff. So. We'll say, um, where's that, a game controller dot, and we'll just make a static method for it. Um, what should we say? Uh, handle correct letter click. And then uh, this dot set active, or we'll just do set active, or enabled, sorry, equals false. So or if we do this dot enabled, it's the same as just enabled. And what we're going to do is just turn off our clickable letter script so that we can't handle multiple pointer clicks. So once we've clicked on it once, we're good. We don't do it ever again. And we won't we won't send the message twice, essentially, for this clickable letter. So this is just one quick and easy way. We could also keep track of what letters were clicked on and stuff. But this is a simple throwaway thing for a kid. There's no reason to overcomplicate it. So let's generate this method here. It's going to give us a static method to handle correct letter click. I'm going to say correct clicks plus plus to increment our correct letter numbers and then we'll say if and i generated a field with that it was alt enter generate field and it created it up top here so we just have this private static int named correct clicks now we'll say if correct clicks is greater than or equal to it should never get greater than but if it is whatever we'll deal with it it's greater than or equal to correct answers or what was it um what did i call that field here oh yeah correct answers Oh, but this is not. So here's where we start to run into issues. When we have a static field trying to access a non-static field, we either have to give us give ourselves some reference to the object and make a singleton or something else, or we can uh, stick with being lazy at first and just make it static. Because I haven't needed to change this in the editor yet, so why worry about it now? I'm gonna get rid of the private keyword here too. We got two private static ones and a public static one. All right, scroll back down and compare against correct answers. Whoops, wrong one. Correct answers is that one. So if we've hit our correct answer count, then we will, um, I guess, choose random letters. And, uh, and you know what we could do? Watch this. Let's just do this. We'll do our character or our letter. We'll increment it. So we'll say letter plus plus, which is just going to take us to the next letter. So we'll start at A. We'll go to B. And then we'll say correct clicks, whoops, equals zero. And we'll choose random letters, or not choose random letter, what is it? It's uh, generate board. So we'll do, we will generate a board. And zoom out. Let's see, oh, generate board doesn't exist because it's also static. So let's see. Does generate board can generate or it's, it's not static is the problem. So can it be static? Let's see. Hmm, yeah, 
Now, the reason it can be static is because it's not referencing any non-static variables. It does reference this non-static method, choose invalid random letter. So let's make that static as well because it doesn't have any state either. It's all good. All of our state right now is stored in this correct uh, clicks. That's it. And letter. We, we store state in those two things and nowhere else. They're both static, so it doesn't matter. We don't have to worry about it. Now, if we wanted to have multiple boards or other things, we probably wouldn't want to keep this static forever. But in this case, I think that it works and it makes sense for what we've got. Let's zoom out a little bit, get rid of that using system statement, show the entire code, and then zoom back in and let's go try it out. Now I expect that when I hit all five correct answers, we go on to the letter B. Oh, it's not going to update my text there though. Let's try it though. We go A, 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 and where's the other A? A, bam. Okay, so a couple things happened. It changed, but my letters didn't reset to white. And um, the correct letter doesn't show up up there. I can see it down here, but it's not there. So let's fix both of those things. We'll just go back into the code, just double click on one of these messages. And uh, when we set the letter, let's also set the color to white. So I'll take this line here on 13. And when we do set letter, just paste it in and say color.white. So there we go, we're resetting to white. And then when we pick a new letter, so when we assign this, let's see, letter plus plus, where's that? Okay, when we assign this, we want to update our display letters. Now, there are two different ways that we could do this. We could either go in and make this no longer static and give it a reference to that thing, um, which is totally fine as an option. We just have to go in and actually make the update to it. We'd have to make clickable letter no longer use the static thing. It would have to get an instance of it, like a singleton or something. Or I think the other option is to just make a script for these and um, have them just read from the game controller or something, or find object, type them and just update them. That seems like an easier way to do it. And that's just what we're gonna go with. So we'll go to these text objects and, oh, well, let's create a new script. I'll go down here, create new C-sharp script and let's call this um, display letter. Open up our display letter script. Oh. For some reason it opened another instance of Visual Studio. Strange, okay, let's do it in here. Open up our display letter script and in here we'll delete out our start and update. Go back to oops, game controller. And I think what I'll do is find all of the display letters and then just set their letter to our selected letter. So when we select our letter is right here, we say letter plus plus, I'll say, um, find objects of type display letter and this is going to give me back a collection of them so i actually want to say for each var display letter in find objects of type and i got to get rid of that semicolon so i'll loop through all of the display letters that i find get a reference to them and then on them say display letter dot set letter to letter now this is not something that exists, so we'll generate the field, generate method. And I don't wanna just do this when we handle, or when we change, I wanna do this right from the beginning as well. So I'm actually gonna take this line, or this little loop here, hit Alt Enter, and I'm gonna extract it into a method and I'll say update display letters. Then I can copy this and I can do this in the on enable too. So we'll generate a board and then make sure that we update the display letters too. Okay, I think that looks good. Now I need to go set up our display letters and make the actual display letter part work. So set letter is here, but it doesn't actually do anything. What I want it to do is just set our character there. So we'll say um, get component tmp text dot text equals letter. Now, sometimes I want these to be capitalized. Sometimes I want them to not be. Oh, and I need the two string here. So I'm going to add in a Boolean option on here. I'll say serialize field. Oops, not serializable, serialize field, bool um, uppercase. And then we'll say if uppercase, we'll copy that, else paste. And then what we're going to do is just on the if uppercase, we'll add the dot to upper. And then here, if it's not, we'll add the, well, I don't need to lower because it's the default, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
if it's not uppercase will force it to be lower even though it should be lower coming in as a source it's always good to just verify and validate the source is actually correct because if i start passing in uppercase letters here suddenly this method is going to wor not work anymore and i'll always see the uppercase version let's save that off go back into unity and we'll assign this display letter to these two text objects Got them both selected, drop the component on, and then on this one, we will check the uppercase box. Second one does not have uppercase. All right, let's hit play and see if the game magically works. All right, A, 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 and where's the other A? A, oh, look at that, we're on to B, 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 B. Oh, wait, why is my last B not working? Oh, let's go to the console and check. Okay, so here's what happened. I see what's going on. This is a good one to catch. So when we turn our components off, remember when I clicked on this one and I, and I made it, got it? Um, we're disabling the component and that is breaking it so that it's no longer clickable a second time. That's an interesting one. That's something that we need to change too. So we can't just disable the component anymore or we need to re-enable them at least when we turn them back on. So let's go back over to our clickable letter. And when we set the letter, let's just say enabled equals true. Now, the reason that this is happening is just because on pointer click doesn't fire off if enabled is false. If enabled is off, we don't handle our mouse down type events. We also don't handle things like update, um, awake, start, any of that kind of stuff. So we really just handle methods that we call when we already have a reference to it. And since our game controller already has a reference to it, it's calling this set letter, it doesn't matter that the game object isn't enabled or that that component of the game object isn't enabled. So I'm going to save this off. Now that we're enabling it again, I'm going to get rid of this there too and save again one more time. And we'll try it one more time. So that should fix our issue. We should be able to click all the way through, I think, to Z, really. Let's give it a go. We got A, 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 B, 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 B. Ah, it's still not working. All right, let's go debug and see why that is. So it's to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here, we're going to add in an on or an update here. So if we add an update in our clickable letter and go back into Unity, we should start to see a checkbox here. So I'm going to play through real quick and check the checkbox stat state of each of these. So hit play. And we'll find all of the A's. And then at the end, I expect all of our clickable letters to be clickable again. So let's go check them out. And one of them is definitely not. Which one is it? So it's this one right here. So 18, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like it would be like that one. Let's, let's click on um, a couple more and see what happens. B, 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 and what's this, number 12? This is the last one, right? B, turn that off. Oh, it was it 12 or 11? Ah, oh, it was 11. So the last one that I turned off, the one that was right here, it's the 12 because we're indexed at zero, so we got zero through 11. It was that B right there. That one didn't turn back on. And if we go back into our code, I think I know why. So we'll go back to our clickable letter script. And yep. There it is. So what's happening is when we handle correct letter click, we go through and regenerate the board. We re-enable all of our letters. And then right after that, we disable this one. So we just need to move up this enabled equals false above handle correct letter click. So if we finish the thing and it's the last one, we've turned it off and then we turn it back on instead of turning it on and turning it off afterwards. All right, that should fix it. Now I should have a simple little game where I can click through on all of the letters. Let's try it again. We go A, 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 beautiful, B, 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 and C's. And I think everything is going good. Let's check all of our text objects. Yep, they seem to be working good. Everything is looking good. I think it's time for me to make this thing a little bit prettier. So let's add in a background. And I want to do that through some of these prefabs that they had in this scene. So I'm going to save off my level and I'm going to go open up the example demo scene here. This demo scene, I'll just drop it on so that it's side by side and I can see them both. 
Okay, expand out this canvas here. And let's go select this component and hit F and zoom in. There we go. Now I can see it. F over the scene view, by the way, lets me zoom in and right mouse button to drag around. I think I want to take this background here that has this character on it and just use that because I think it looks kind of cool. So let's expand this out. And I don't know why my canvas looks so strange in here. Let's see. Let's just try this scene again. So expand out the canvas. Got components, component one. I'm not sure where this thing is. Let's go check this background. Just keep clicking through. Ah, oh, there we go, background. So this background is referencing this common BG. Oh, okay. It's a prefab here that we've got going on. Um, where did I find this thing? You know, I'm gonna go in and let's go back into our demo scene or our working scene. Sample scene, no, level one. I'm gonna go into their prefabs folder because I think that in the prefabs there were actually some more easily usable things. So I'm gonna go into other, is it other? Somewhere there was a lobby folder, ah, scene panels, let's take that. We'll take the lobby one and drop it in the canvas. I'm gonna expand that out, take the background from there and take that and put that into my canvas. Oh, I can't just take it though. So I'm gonna duplicate it and then take the duplicate and drag it out. Otherwise I gotta go into the prefab, do at prefab edit mode and a whole bunch of other nonsense that I don't wanna deal with. Okay, so that should get me a background over my thing. Let's see, let's turn off this lobby. We go i've got a little blue gradient background there i'm gonna turn the lobby part back on and i'm gonna take this grass here and then that character too so let's click on the grass till i can find it come on grass where are you where's this background grass ah floor that's probably it floor and character so i'll duplicate floor and character take the copies drop them ah, let's put them as children in my background and then delete that lobby out there we go. This is looking a little bit better. It's a little huge. So I'm going to go select this background and maybe, oh, well, let's take the floor piece, grab that out and then scale this down or maybe make it stretch to fit. Um, nope. Yeah, actually stretch to fit looks pretty good. And then they'll do the same for the character. Let's shrink this guy way down. He's way too huge. So I'm going to go to scene view, go to the tool, rec tool, hold shift and just drag him down and maybe set him up there. I want to get all of this background stuff behind our canvases. So let's take the floor, drop it up there. And I think it's starting to look kind of good. It's got a little bit of a background. There's character back there, some stuff going on, and they can click on the letters. Um, I think I want to tint this background dude just a little bit gray so that he's not so enticing to stare at. Let's darken him up just a little bit. There we go. And then um, let's add in a counter for how many letters they have left so that they can get excited. Like, hey, I got this many left. Um, let's see, is there a star graphic in here? I bet there's a, quite a few of them. Look at that. Let's look under the prefabs actually. I bet there's some cool stars in here. A lot of cool stuff. I don't even know what to use. You know, maybe I'll just use a gem. Let's see, a common UI, what did it say, gem something? Man, there's so many options, it makes it really tough. Stats gem, let's see what that looks like. Oh, gotta put it under my canvas. Hmm, I don't like that at all. How about stats gold? Ah, eh, close, I want more like a stats star, is there something like that? Is that this whole section? Um, no. Okay, whatever. I'll just, I'm going to add in a text object because I don't like to sit around thinking too long. I can just add in some code. So duplicate this. I'll move it over and this will be at my counter. And I'll set the text here to zero and maybe make it say X zero. Drag it up, get rid of that W, drag it over here a little bit. And let's, um, should I, I want to left align this. We'll left align it and then it'll say how many we've gotten left. Or should I say how many got left or how many are remaining? Hmm. Actually, you know what? I think it would be better to do like a, you know, like a fill in or like check off, like showing the number of letters to get and then showing that, uh, or no, let's do a countdown. How many are left? So we'll start with five and then it'll go down to zero and then they'll get excited. Cool. So let's call this um, remaining counter text. There we go, remaining counter text. I'm gonna drag that up so that it's, 
above the panel, I guess, in case it ever pops up there. Um, let's name this uppercase and lowercase text. There we go. Okay, so let's set up our remaining counter text. I'm going to create a script for that. So go in scripts, create another C sharp script, call this remaining counter text. I didn't create my file again. Second time this has happened where it didn't create something for me. Remaining counter text. And then we'll open that up. And in here, we're just gonna, well, I guess get referenced by game controller and have game controller update us. No need to go through eventing and cleaning everything up and all the messaging. We'll just let this thing directly write to the remaining counter text. So whenever we handle a correct letter click, we'll say, um, oh, right here, remaining counter text or find object of type, remaining counter text dot set remaining to, um, correct answers minus correct clicks, right? Seems right. Then we'll generate a set remaining. So this is going to take in an integer for the number of remaining answers, which is just the total number minus the number that we've had correct. I'll hit F12 to go into it, change B to remaining. And then we'll set the text to X and then that remaining value. So we'll say get component, PMP text, which added my using text mesh pro statement right there automatically. Parentheses text equals, and then here we're just gonna do dollar sign quotes X, or actually let's just do quotes X plus remaining. A little bit cleaner and a little bit less text there. Get rid of all these using statements. And um, I think that's it. Let's see, we set remaining text there. We set it here when we handle a correct letter click. Really, we want to set it at the beginning as well because when we restart our level, we want to set it to five. So let's copy this and let's paste that in when we, I guess it would be when we generate the board. When we generate the board, we'll do the same thing. Um, okay, in fact, that means that here, I guess we're doing it twice. It doesn't matter, it'll be fine. We're gonna set it to zero and then we're gonna set it back. Okay, our code is getting, I think, to the limits of what it needs to be. We should be able to go in and set up our remaining counter text, Let's assign that component. Oh, and I need to remove the display letter because that is not a display letter. That would have been a big issue or big broken text. Hit play and let's see it in action. So A is four, three, click on the wrong letter, nothing happens. Two, one, where's my last A? Boom! So now I think it's just fireworks and sound effects. And I think I'll add those a little bit later on because it's already pretty close to functional. Everything works. I think I can put this in front of a kid, just um, maybe turn off the panel image here. So that it's, oh, maybe turn it on and maybe make some better background. Let's try that. Is there a better background image here that we can grab? There's so much art in this pack. I don't even know what to use. So a little bit overwhelming. There's so much cool stuff. Let's see. I don't see anything. I don't know. I'll find something anyway. But for now, I think that this is probably good. I'm going to build this out to a device real quick, have a kid try it out, see how it feels, and then maybe make some iterations on it, make it a little bit better and polish it up. I think that the next thing would probably be just some sound effects and then like some cool little sparkles or something when they get the letter right. But, you know, to be honest, the, the little boards don't have that. So I don't know how overboard and how addictive I need to make it and how much of that, you know, facebook -y reinforcement type stuff I really need to add in for a little kid's game versus it just being fun. They click on it, they have a blast and they learn their letters. I might make some more options for controlling the letters so that maybe just do A and B because those are the two letters that we're working on. Um, and maybe show some characters for it, but I think that we're good with this and I'm going to leave it here. So if you like this kind of thing, you want to see more of it, just let me know, drop a comment down below. Um, if you're interested in deeper game development stuff, of course, just check out my courses or webpage or YouTube channel. I got all kinds of stuff and teach how to go deeper on game development, 2d and 3d stuff, all kinds of fun stuff. And, um, whatever you're doing though, just build games, have fun with it and have a blast. It's a lot of fun and 
like I said, this is the kind of thing that makes me love doing game dev. I just kid wants to do something. I can go make it. It only takes me like an hour and then I can just push this out to an iPad or a web page or whatever and just share it with all of them. They can all go play it and have a blast. So I think that's all. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for joining me on this. Again, if you have questions, comments, just like it. Please share, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks. Bye. All right, I know I said I was done a second ago, but after testing this out, I wanted to make a couple little changes and I wanted to share them with you. The first is that we need to make a quick change on the canvas to make it actually scale with the screen size correctly. Once I built it out to a device, I quickly realized I'd forgotten to do that. So make sure that you go on your canvas and set it the canvas scaler if you don't have one there should be one there but add it if you don't have one and make sure that it's set to scale with screen size pick a reference resolution and then rescale your panel you can see the values that i've got here i ended up with about a two almost 283 on the x and 200 there on the y and if you look at my text font sizes i'm at what 179 now okay so that's cool. That fixes the layout stuff. The other thing that I wanted to add though, after playing around with it is some actual audio. And that's the next thing that we're going to do. So I imported a couple little audio clips where it's just me saying the letters. Here's one. Let's hear it. A. That's me saying a, or capital a. the double a is a capital a. So I'm going to make it so that whenever we play or click on one of these, we say the letter there so that the kid knows what the letter is that they're finding. They're not just matching images. They're actually associating it with the word. So let's do that now. I'm going to go into our clickable letters here. So I selected one. We'll go to that clickable letter script. And all I want to do when we play the correct one is, well, I guess in our handle correct letter click, maybe play the letter that they've clicked on. So actually, let's go into that. I'll hit F12. And then in here, I'm going to tell it to ha or have it tell something to play a sound. In fact, you know what? I can just add the audio source directly onto this game controller and then have it play the sound. So let's create an audio source and oh, wait, this is all static. Let's create an audio player and then um, hmm, do you want to do that? Yeah, I'll create an audio player script and I will just uh, oh, reference that. No, maybe I will convert this away from being static now. Okay, I've been convinced. It's time to do it. Let's make the quick change. We're going to remove the static keyword everywhere. Go bam, remove static, static. And we're going to turn this into a singleton. So our game controller is going to lose all of the statics and it's going to get switched over to be a singleton. It's got to find every reference of static. And if I'm not sure I found them all, I can go to the top, control F and search for static. Okay, none left. Now I just need to make this work as a singleton. The easiest way to do that is just add an awake. I'll get rid of the private keyword. In fact, let's get rid of them in all of those places there since I don't need them. And then here, what we need to do is add in one actual static thing, the instance. So I'll say underscore instance equals this. And then we'll hit alt enter, generate a field for it, which is going to give us that private game controller and we'll replace private with static, which is just going to give us a static instance here and then we can make that instance um, accessible from outside of here so that we can use it somewhere so i'll actually make this public and i'll refactor this to be a capital i and then make it a property with a getter and a private setter okay so now it's a property that can only be set by this class but it can be read by anything anywhere we've got a very simple Singleton. It doesn't prevent duplicate creation, but it'll give us quick reference or quick access to our game controller, at least with a game controller dot instance. I'm going to um, turn this into an expression body method to just shorten it up so you don't take up so much space. All right. Now I'm going to save and let's go fix our clickable letter. Because our clickable letters now got an error here saying that, hey, this doesn't exist. So we add a dot and paste in the word instance and here add a dot and paste in instance. All right. That should fix it there. Do we need to fix anything else? I don't think so. I hit control shift B, do a build. Looks like it's good. Um, let's go test it real quick one more time. And then we'll finish up the code for the actual audio playing or add the code for the audio playing. All right, there we go. We play, it's no longer a singleton and everything seems to work just fine. Okay, cool. So we'll stop playing, we'll go back into the code and let's make our game controller play some audio. 
So what we're going to do is just grab an audio source and cache it. I guess I can do that in a wake, which means I should probably switch this back from an expression body to a body block with alt enter. So when I do that, that's why I love this little shortcut in hockey you can just go back and forth. If it doesn't need to be more than one line, I can, or if it can just be down to one line, I can shorten it down. If it needs to be more than that, I can swap it right back. All right, so let's change our awake to also cache an instance of our audio source or our audio, yeah, audio source. So say underscore audio source equals get component audio source. And I'm gonna hit alt enter and generate a field for it. I figured, you know, why not cache this? I'm gonna be using this every time. Now, I'm not caching other things, so you might wonder why cache this and not the other stuff. Really just because I was keeping it simple before and now I'm just being a tiny little bit more performance aware, even though it doesn't really matter. No real reason. So that's, I, I guess that's why, just because I felt like I start to make things a little bit better as, as we go along. So here we go, our audio source field is ready. And then when we click on a valid one or handle a correct letter click, we just need to tell it to play a clip for our current letter. So we'll say audio source dot play. And that should be almost good enough, but we need to actually be able to set up the clips now. So right now our audio source would play, but it would just play whatever clip is in there. And I wanna make it so that we can have a separate clip for every letter, a capital and a lowercase version of it. So to do that, we'll just go up to the top and we're going to add our serialized field. Essentially the entire reason that we created or turned this into a singleton instead of a static class. So let's do it. We'll just add a serialized field. Oh, and let's fix that on the screen here. And we'll make this a list of audio clips. So let's say list of audio clip. And then I'll just call this underscore audio clips. Add that semicolon to the end. I'm going to copy that. And then what we're going to do when we handle a correct click is just select the right clip to play and then play it. So we'll say, let's add a line right up here. Say var clip equals audio clips dot first or default, which is going to let us do a search through the audio clips and we'll search by using the lambda statement with T and then the equals and greater than to do our lambda. And then that's gonna let us search for properties on each audio clip and we wanna look at the name. We'll look and see if the name is equal to our current letter, dot two string, because remember our letter is a character and we need the string one to do the actual comparison. So that will get us a clip and then we can just say audio source dot play, we can play do play one shot actually and just pass in the clip or we could alternatively set the clip and call play i'm going to remove the other play statement down below we'll save that off and then we just need to go in and actually set up our audio clips so let's minimize this go back to unity and then we'll add an audio source and add in the audio clip so here on the game controller i'm in the audio folder i'm going to add in my a and my b Save that off, let's hit play and see if it works. Hit. There we go. Nothing. All right, seems like it's working good. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is fix the capitals or make the capital letters play. I'm gonna add those into the audio clips array right now and then we'll go do the code for it. Let's save and then I'll go back to my game controller. And the last thing I need to figure out whether or not it's a capital one or a lowercase one that's getting passed in there. So let's go see where do we do the capitalization? I believe it was in set letter. Yep, here, here we randomly pick whether or not it's going to be capital. So what I need to do is I guess when we do the on pointer click, just tell it whether or not we went with a capital letter. So I'm gonna add in a bool for capital or what did I call it? Upper, I think I called it uppercase in my wording. So I'm gonna say uppercase. So we'll say uppercase. And then if we do do an uppercase one here, I'll just add in a brace and we'll just say uppercase is equal to true. And then otherwise, I guess I wanna set it to false because we do replace these letters. So I don't wanna leave it on true just because it got set to true once. So let's go to false if it's false and true if it's true. So the one where I have two upper, I set it to true. And then in handle correct letter click, I can just pass in the uppercase value. Hit F12, we'll make that a parameter. So I'll say bool 
uppercase, get rid of the underscore because it's a parameter, not a field. And then I'll copy it. And then here, when I get the clip, I can just say um, if uppercase, then clip is going to be equal to the uppercase one, if, if that exists. So we'll say if uppercase. Oh, whoops, I missed the C there on my uppercase. That's some irony, right? Then it's equal to letter to string plus letter to string. It's just going to be the letter twice in there. That seems good. Um, and I can get rid of these extra braces. And I bet. So now we'll set it to the default letter. And then if it's uppercase, we'll try to go to the, um, the other one instead. And we're really kind of doing it twice here. So I, I could probably say else do that, but I don't really care. So I'm just going to leave it and save. And then let's go try it out. So when I get my uppercase A's, I expect to hear an uppercase A. And when I get the lowercase ones, I expect to hear just regular. A. Capital A. Oh, I called it capital, of course. A. Capital A. A. I need to reword those or re-record those. All right, though, now it's actually working, and I think it's in a much better state, something that I can actually give to a kid to play and let them have fun with, and the build works and puts it into the right resolution. All right, again, I hope this was helpful. Hopefully the little extra addition was useful too, and if you like this kind of stuff, just let me know. Drop a comment down below, and um, if you don't like this kind of stuff, let me know, I guess, and drop a comment down below, and then make sure you share and all that other stuff. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks, everybody out there, and thanks, everybody on Patreon too. All right, bye.